Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishwash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is one MCQ about bromoester or more specifically if I say it's alpha bromoester. It's reaction in presence of aldehyde and base with multiple steps. What is the product? If you got it, what name reaction associated with it? Please write in the comment box right now. After that you will know. So okay fine. So I believe uh, you are able to do it. So please try by yourself and whatever answer you get, please write in the comment box along with few words as explanation. And I believe I shall reward you with a heart. Now, I believe you have tried by yourself, so it's my turn to give you the right answer. So if you look at this molecule, this is alpha bromo ester and one aldehyde. And here the uniqueness is the base potassium tertiary butoxide in tertiary butanol as solvent. We know that potassium tertiary butanol, butoxide is very bulky base. So it can only act as base, not nucleophile. Okay, so it will abstract proton. More specifically, if I say most acidic proton. Now, the, in this molecule, there are actually two types of proton which could be abstracted. One is this alpha proton of aldehyde and second is this alpha proton of ester. Actually, this alpha proton of ester is expected to be more acidic and it has a fate. Let me discuss everything stepwise. Now, how? So, first it will be abstracted and it will generate a nucleophile. Now, in the reaction medium, there is one aldehyde and one nucleophile, okay. So, if they will react together and remember aldehydes are more prone for nucleophilic attack because one side of this carbonyl is hydrogen. So, this aldehyde is less bulky, more electron deficient means more electrophilic this carbonyl carbon. So, it is activated for nucleophilic attack compared to ketone and this phenomena is well explained by the concept of burji dunich trajectory. I have already uploaded a dedicated lecture on this topic. Now let us go back to the main mechanism. First this proton abstraction to generate carbon ion which is first resonance stabilized by the CO2 ET group and second it is stabilized further by the minus I effect of this halogen here bromine. So it will do a nucleophilic attack with this carbonyl group so here it is double bond okay fine so it will attack and it will open up so in instantly it will produce this alkoxide obviously as a counter cation there is potassium but I am not focusing that now so this is the product now if you look at there is one O minus and the next carbon is um, containing one halogen bromo and bromo is a better living group not only that if you look at this molecule little carefully that this is a star means a star have one carbonyl so these part you can say that this is alpha halocarbonyl and we know that these alpha halocarbonyls are more activated for sn2 type reaction because the TS is stabilized with the conjugation of this carbonyl group, I have already discussed in a dedicated lecture. So, <clears throat> sorry, what happens in the next step? Next step, this O minus act as nucleophile and through intramolecular SN2 type reaction, it produces a three member ring or commonly known as epoxide. So, here this alpha, beta, epoxy, ester is produced. Okay, this is actually Darzen's reaction. Now later on what happens in the next stage? Next stage it is treated with this magnesium iodide. Remember student magnesium is a pretty strong Lewis acid. So it will coordinate with this O minus means I mean this will donate its lone pair to magnesium and there is a chance that one iodine will come out. So here this oxygen is carrying a formal positive charge. It produces MgI and I minus. And we know this after this coordination, these two carbon, this is alpha and this beta carbon, both became more electron deficient because it is true that oxygen is electronegative withdrawing, fine. But when oxygen is carrying a positive charge, it is more electronegative, so even more withdrawing. Consequently, now if I ask you a simple question, in which place the positive charge density is expected to more alpha or beta? 
obviously in beta because alpha position is clo in close proximity with the CO2 ET. So it can't hold that much positive charge effectively but this beta can because beta is attached to another alkyl group. So that's why the positive charge density on this beta carbon is expected to be more. So nucleophilic attack is preferred on the beta carbon. So it will attack and it will open up. So in this way what it will produce one side is iodo another side is O minus and later on through workup it will be produced. Now student you may think that sir in the first step similar type of reaction this part we have shown that epoxide formation and in the second step we are showing epoxide opening why because one concept presence of this Lewis acid and it has a name that epoxide opening in presence of Lewis acid and that is also called epoxide opening under neutral condition. I have already discussed a dedicated lecture on epoxide opening too. Please visit for better understanding. So that is why in the second step epoxide opening will happen and such kind of molecules are called halohydrin or more specifically if I say iodohydrin. It means iodo and hydroxyl are one to position and trans orientation. So this will be the product. Now a simple question may come in your mind that sir, tertiary butoxide was there which was a pretty strong base. You have the cyclohexane aldehyde. Why the aldol condensation did not happen? Because we have read that in presence of strong base aldehyde can undergo aldol condensation. And student another important information I want to add that remember aldol condensation. So aldol condensation is reversible reaction. It is true that aldehyde can do this aldol condensation efficiently but one simple information. Let us consider that if this molecule undergo aldol condensation the carbon ion will generate here. It is true and this is student tertiary carbon ion. So 3 degree carbon ion is not that much actually not that much nucleophilic. Why? Because the nucleophile is pretty bulky. So first of all it is reversible then nucleophile is bulky. So this pathway will not followed rather than this Drazen's reaction pathway will be followed and later on epoxide opening in presence of Lewis acid. So that is the confusion I believe should not be there. So that is that is the logic. Now so if we look at what are the key steps and name reaction associated here. The first step is the proton abstraction this acid base reaction and remember student this tertiary butoxide can abstract proton from both this alpha bromo acetate means alpha bromo this acetate ester or this aldehyde both but but this alpha bromo acetate has the fate the other one means the aldol condensation has no fate so that is why this pathway will be followed okay now nucleophil generation here and second is Dargen's reaction or Dargen glycidic ester condensation. I have already discussed in a dedicated lecture to produce this alpha beta epoxy ester derivative and third step is epoxide opening by Lewis acid and nucleophile means iodine iodide. So, so after workup it will produce this product. Now what is the answer here? Answer is iodo hydroxyl 1 2 position. So this one. It is student easy but the options are arranged such a way that it can create confusion. So in this way I shall suggest you please read the name reaction. It is essential. If you know the name reaction then you do not need to force your brain that much that what could be the product. This reaction condition is Darzen glycidic ester condensation and it produces alpha beta epoxy ester. Fine in the step overall reaction and next step is this magnesium iodide and in this magnesium iodide is a Lewis acid nucleophile so epoxide opening will happen and that is why you can say that one part will be iodide another part will be OH fine gone this is gone two option one part will be iodide another OH gone what is left option B so you do not need to go even the third stage. So that is why I suggest please read the name reaction in details. I have already discussed dedicated lectures on many name reaction even this Dargen glyceric ester condensation also. So this is so in this conclusion in this video what you have learned that potassium tertiary butoxide is a very bulky base so it cannot act as nucleophile it selectively act as base. This alpha aloester can produce a three member epoxide ring upon treatment with carbonyl compound and this is called Darzen's reaction. 
Epoxide opening could be achieved by acid, base or Lewis acid sometime it is called neutral medium also I have already discussed a dedicated lecture on this. Iodide is student a good nucleophile and it can open up epoxide ring in presence of I repeat in presence of Lewis acid like Mg2 plus. And finally that epoxide opening by nucleophilic attack results in trans halohyde ring. And in this case, I request you student, please recall the concept of halogenation like bromination of alkene, bridge bromonium ion and its opening. Okay, you can remember, I have already discussed this lecture also. So, this is the end of the discussion. I believe this video may be useful. Please write your opinion in the comment box and if you really consider the contents are worthy, then please help this channel to grow. So, stay happy, stay blessed. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.